Just waiting for my lighting to adjust here. Welcome back to the studio, everyone. I am going to go over more of my personal story today. And it's going to be in line with what um, I'm really focused on for the for my small business. So for the small business, I am focused on fine art photography and creative writing. So I really wanted to share the story behind that and how I got to where I am because I haven't really done that too much. And once I get into my writing a little bit more, I want to do that, um, go into my you know, personal story of how I got here. But this one... This is one of my artworks. It's water. So it's it's reflecting everything. But yeah, that's one of the ones that I have. Um, let's see. I have a smaller one. I'll try to get this and clearly see it. So that's another print that I have uh, entitled Koi. And then, let's see, I have another one. This is on the Fuji Flex paper, so it's very shiny. So you have to get it angled correctly. But this is a photograph of the Oculus uh, in New York City. So I made a black and white of this one. But I definitely want to make a, a guide on the different paper because you can see how shiny that is. <laughs> There's all different types of paper. And then the last one I have is this one. Um, this is also Koi but it's on a different product. This is the True Life Acrylic. So I do like the, uh, the shine on this one as well. But yeah, it's nice. Okay, so how did I get here? I I took the long road, of course. Uh, <laughs> I definitely took the long road. I was in high school, I guess I can start there. And I was very lazy in school. Um, just really unmotivated. I didn't have any plans on what to do at, you know, after graduation of high school. And so I probably had, within the first two years after graduating high school, I probably had 19 to 22 different jobs. And of course, that wasn't a very good start at all. Um, I would say that I put myself in a really bad position because I was irresponsible, of course, and uh, immature to say the least. I really didn't have a, a sense of direction um, of what I wanted to do. And it's not to say that I grew up in a broken home because my parents were upper middle class. Uh, 
And so, if anything, I was very spoiled. And I thought that everything would come rather easy to, you know, to me in life. And of course, that's not the case. So, I would say the first two, three years out of, after high school, I jumped from one job to the next. And then by the time I got into my early 20s and started to come to my senses around 22, 23 years old, I had burned down a lot of bridges. Um, I would say that I, gosh, maybe the entire city <laughs> was on fire. Um, it was... It was, uh, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So I spent the next few years, several years, um, until I was about 30, just trying to survive, uh, really trying to survive and take whatever job I could get. Because at that point, my resume was like three pages long because of all of the places I've, I had been, some jobs I would stay two to three weeks, some jobs were like two to three months, um, and everything in between. And so potential employers were very reluctant on hiring me. And so by the time I was 30 years old, I was working um, in a warehouse where the work conditions weren't great, but it was the only thing I could get. Um, because of how, how badly my, you know, my resume was. So, um, yeah, I, going into 2009, I packed up everything and I moved to California, which, um, I had never been there, but, uh, I took some classes in photography um, I took some classes in writing, uh, specifically screenwriting. And during that time, I realized that I was able to learn and grasp things pretty well. And that's when I started having a lot of regrets, you know, um, because I realized that I could have been, you know, really good in school, <laughs> like really good in school. And because I didn't apply myself, uh, the way I should have, I ended up making life a lot, you know, more difficult, a lot harder for myself than I needed to. So, um, let's say fast forward to 2011. I finished taking the classes I was going to take and I decided, okay, I want to see if I can make it in commercial photography. I started to show my portfolio around and interviewers and curators, you know, just whoever was giving interviews, managers really, they started telling me that my work wasn't a right, the right fit for commercial photography. Um, and so they were like, you, you should try putting your work in a gallery. And of course, all the classes I had taken, you know, nothing really prepared me for trying to get my work in the galleries, but that's where everyone was pointing me towards like your work really belongs in a gallery. And to be honest, that's how I approach my work because when I was in my late teens, like 16, 17 years old, um, growing up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we had a Los Olas Boulevard, which was, just this long stretch of road, maybe a mile, a mile and a half or so, where nothing but art galleries and, you know, full of sculptures, paintings, mixed media, things like that. And so my Friday nights 
that's where I was, <laughs> you know. Uh, I was just fascinated by by artwork, and um, in high school I did take painting classes, I took drafting classes, I took some pottery, uh, illustration classes, you know, I, I took those types of things, but it was like I wasn't good at any of it. Um, wasn't good at painting, wasn't good at illustration, wasn't good at sculpture or pottery, I just wasn't good at it. Um, I was okay at drafting, but I wasn't interested in it at all. And so, um, yeah, I graduated high school just with no direction. And I bounced around for years finding out what I didn't like to do. <laughs> so, um, I think the first time I picked up a camera was just like a regular point and shoot. And I was in 2004, I want to say. I uh, bought like a Samsung for $100 point and shoot camera. And even then I didn't think anything of it. And so, like I said, it was, you know, maybe five years later until um, I started taking photography classes. So yeah, that was, that was where I started. And then um, after not being able to get into commercial photography, I started the small business I have now in July, 2012. And even then I didn't know <laughs> how I was going to get to where I wanted to go and actually like how to approach it, what I really wanted to do. And so it was just a lot of, of learning and questions and stumbling and mistakes and, um, the path to my, final destination definitely wasn't a straight line. Um, and I realized now that I look back at it, I realized that I really had to fix my personal life. Like the mess I had made, I had to fix that first in order for my business to really thrive. Um, because back in 2012, I was still fighting with, uh, I had a lot of debt, um, my credit score and everything like that was, was horrendous. Um, and I just, all the mistakes I had made, like I said, just, I realized like, how much of an impact a negative impact that had on my, on my life and how much it would keep me from, uh, succeeding, you know, in the future. And so the biggest thing was I had to fix my credit. Um, and so I started paying attention to Experian and Equifax and, TransUnion, um, and so, yeah, it was really bad. It was really bad. And so, uh, yeah, I, I just, it's, it's taken me years to get to where I am now. And even now I'm still not completely out of the woods. Um, but I do want to share, uh, a really awesome victory I've had um, financially because now I'll have more freedom to apply for business credit um, and get better rates on my loans, better interest rates, that type of thing, right? But I had to fix my personal credit first because they check all those things um, where you when you're applying to or for business credit. So. I had a huge debt on my credit report that I started paying attention to it, I had a huge debt on there um, that I felt like shouldn't have been on there and needed to be removed. And so, um, 
back in 2019, August 2019, I filed the paperwork for it. Um, and then it turned into a whole group lawsuit thing. Like it had to go through the courts and everything. So that was back in August, 2019. And I was notified, um, by the people who were in charge and they were, I guess we were like defendants in the case. And so we would get updates on the progress and what was going on. And then all of a sudden by 2020, it was just silent. We didn't hear anything. And I didn't hear anything back from them until January last year, 2023, that the lawsuit and everything was filed, a settlement was reached, and what was on our credit reports could be taken off or would be taken off, right? So, okay, that was good news. So then I was like, okay, when is this going to get cleared off of my credit report, right? It, wow, it just went silent again. You know, all of, you know, January 2023, all through last year, it was silent. Um, coming into this year, it was silent. I would call, try to get updates, like, okay, you know, like what's going on? Um, no response. <laughs> so it was, um, it was very frustrating. It was very, very frustrating uh, for me. So last month I checked the status and there had been an update. Um, and I found out that the, the settlement had cleared. They had finally implemented the um, process of how everything was supposed to go. And um, my account was completely cleared. Um, I didn't know anything. Um, everything was completely clear back to zero, uh, to zero dead on, on like it was like two accounts. And that meant, or it means that out of all the debt I had accumulated, about 80% of that debt was gone off of my credit report. Not officially, but the account was cleared. And so that was a huge win for me. So that means that now I'm going to focus on getting business um, business lines and I'll continue to improve on the studio setup that I have here. Um, and really like focus in on marketing a lot more because the attempts and everything I was doing last year, as far as publications and advertising, that type of thing, um, participating in exhibits, like it just didn't pan out the past, past few years, the way that I was hoping. Um, and I really needed to get a return on investment and it just didn't work out. Uh, so I decided for 2024, I was going to concentrate on just focusing on my personal life because I put so much income resources into the business that, and I didn't get uh, nearly as much return on investment that things in my personal life were just, just out of whack. So I decided to end the last year coming into this year that I was going to clean up 
as much stuff on the personal side as possible. And, um, gosh, uh, today's the 22nd. I would say two weeks ago, I checked my credit report. I think it was Equifax. It was TransUnion first and then Equifax. And my accounts were finally uh, cleared. And so, like I said, about 80% of the debt on my, like in total was gone off of my credit report. And my credit score got a much needed bump up and hopefully going into next month, I'll get another bump up um, to the point where, you know, like I said, insurance rates um, can come down when I apply for things because <laughs> uh, I was getting in ter- I was getting terrible rates, terrible, terrible rates. Um, I am going to focus on paying off more, more, uh, equipment and things that I've leased or, uh, I have payments on. So it's just this year I'm focused less on, less on marketing and more on getting rid of the debt that I've accumulated over the years, trying to get the business, uh, thriving. So this time next month, um, I should be in a really good place. I should be in a really good place. So I'm really happy about that. Let me fix the lighting because it's going in and out. So point being is that I I think what I'm doing now in fixing my personal funds, resources, etc. is really going to help me with the business moving forward. And um Gosh, I think this is the best position I've ever been in, just ever in my in my adult life, and I'm still not um, where I would like to be. But I did share, uh, even in one of the Instagram stories uh, uh, last week, about I finally upgraded my second monitor here. Um, Cause I definitely, I need, definitely needed another, uh, better monitor and I've moved all of my equipment from PC to Apple. So everything is working pretty well, um, as far as my workflow and gosh, I just am really thankful for how just everything has worked. Um, and just sticking with it. Now, as far as my job, <laughs> uh, my, cause I'm still a contractor. I do work for a fortune 500 company and this is the first time I've ever done that. I've been there, uh, for over a year for sure. I think March, February was a year that I've been there. They, they renewed my contract I have so much stuff to do. (laughs) Like the first year, I really got used to the 
user interface, the workflow, you know, just communicating with different departments, things like that. And over the past, like once they renewed my contract this year, just the workload, I'm I'm adjusting to it because now it's just a lot of stuff. Um, I'm on the computer all day. I'm on the computer all day uh, looking at tons of spreadsheets. And I won't say like keeping them organized, but definitely have to be organized. Um, I communicate with different departments and sometimes I communicate with agents um, like fixing like minor issues they might be having with their accounts. Uh, but my job title, which I didn't even apply for, <laughs> is I'm the assistant to the special projects manager, which again, I didn't apply for. Like I said, I hadn't worked for a Fortune 500 company before, so I applied for an entry level position in data entry. And once I injured my back uh, working in a warehouse, um, I had to do something else besides general labor uh, jobs. And so um, I I started working in data entry um, after that, and it was just an entry level job. Um, the pay wasn't great when I started, and then I eventually switched to a different, diff, like two different jobs um, in data entry. And now I've been here for over a year, and this is like just, again, the best position I've ever had, <laughs> you know? It's, it's just, the, it's been the best position I've ever had. Um, it does have its, uh, like the last couple of weeks have been tough uh, with this you know particular project I'm working on, but just the responsibility and the things I have to learn on the fly. And my boss, she is very, um, like no nonsense demanding but she's not like over my shoulder um so to speak whenever i'm emailing the team i have to copy her in for sure like i copy her in with everything so it's not like she doesn't know what i'm doing and the system is set up to where she knows when i'm online or when i'm away from my desk like stuff like that so it's like your time, your what you're doing, everything's tracked, you know, but she's not like over my shoulder because she's working from home um, and I'm in I'm in the office and some folks I work with, they're not even in the same state. <laughs> you know, everybody's in the in the on the server, but, you know, some some of us are on different, you know, in different time zones, things like that. So I've gotten used to working with a lot of other people and going back to my high school days, if you would have told me that I'd be working with so many different people at one time, I would have said you're crazy because my personality was, I sit in the back of the classroom, I don't interject my thought, you know, <laughs> into what's going on um, or participate in any you know, sort of way. So very shy, uh, very quiet, very much introverted to myself, very lazy, very unambitious. And yeah, it was crazy because when I got to this job last year, they didn't tell me that I was going to be the assistant to the special projects manager. I thought I was going to do that entry. Um, or continue to do data entry like I had before the, with the past, you know, two jobs I had. But, um, it was, it was jarring. It was jarring. And it was probably the best thing that could happen because I didn't know what I was walking into. And, um, but it took me out of my comfort zone. 
it took me out of my comfort zone and it allowed me to get used to talking verbally communicating um with perfect strangers people that i would just like i'm usually not comfortable around a crowd of people that i'm not you know that i don't know uh so it's definitely pulled me out of that and i have to talk to executives the vp for accounting um you know everybody that's a lot higher up on the corporate ladder than where i'm at right so it's allowed me to talk to everyone it's allowed me to talk to everyone and i think the thing that i've learned is no matter who you're talking to or what position they're in people always want to be treated well you know people want to be treated like people like human beings and so if you're kind um more times than not that will you'll get along with everyone um obviously you're going to meet people who just don't like you or um people who look down on you because you're kind of on the bottom rung of the corporate ladder but I, th I think for the most part, um, everyone that I've met or everyone I have to, you know, communicate with, uh, very nice, very professional. And for me, it's just staying on point. For me, it's staying on point, staying on top of my game and understanding that um, if I get something wrong, on my end, it's going to trickle down to everybody else. <laughs> you know, you're going to have like five or six other departments like, what are you doing? And then they have to they'll they'll go back to my boss and say, hey, you know, this isn't right or, you know. And so I've gotten to the point where. Um, I am very protective of my name <laughs> so when i send out emails or spreadsheets or whatever the case is right or sometimes i have to do the weekly and now i'm doing the monthly reports uh for billing and all kinds of stuff right so uh, <laughs> sending everything out i'm just very like i take a lot of pride in what i do and in protecting my name and like when I put my name on something and I send it out to uh, other departments, like it has to be done right, making sure it's done right. And when I make mistakes, um, making sure that it's not a reoccurring theme, you know, learning from all of my mistakes, you know, not making the same mistakes four, five, six, seven times. Um, that type of thing and so i i think that was that was a really good contributing factor i feel with them uh extending my contract so so there's that but yeah i i think if you have had a terrible start to life um, and made bad decisions I mean I was just praying to God that it wouldn't be a, a lifetime sentence you know uh, because especially my late 20s going into my 30s that's what it felt like it felt like the first two three four years out of high school i made so many mistakes like there is no coming back from this you know um that's what it felt like like it was it was a, a lifetime sentence and i just had to keep going um i definitely had to learn some new things and i'm still learning uh new new skills um, and I think I'm at the point right now where it's just getting 
used to being in a in a certain room full of people um being around ceos vice presidents projects manager my boss her boss the it department <laughs> all of them i mean and that's a bit that's been the biggest thing at work uh at my day job is working with the it department because they work with hundreds of people they get all these complaints and everything and so the last couple of weeks i've had major problems with my computer my computer is old my computer has always been old and i wasn't expecting to work with old hardware working at a fortune 500 company but yeah on especially on the second floor the 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 computers are old <laughs> they are so um me being a contractor still i can't get my own like you know like a microsoft surface pro or something like that i yeah so i my my computer is not doing so well so now that i have more projects to work on um it's been acting up pretty badly so i've been talking with the it department and it was at first it was like okay he doesn't know anything about computers so we can tell him just throw more memory on it or do xyz and it'll be okay i'm like no that's not the case so uh we got into a pretty long discussion so now they know that i know about computers the cpu the gpu if you have a dedicated graphics card or not what the memory does do and does not do all that type stuff so now they're like okay we well, actually have to resolve this issue um but yeah it's 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 interesting it's interesting but even when you have these discussions these disagreements or these instances where people look down on you it's like you can't have a bad attitude and start yelling and complaining and all these different it's like you just have to stay calm and just give them the information this is what's going wrong um this is what's going to fix it this is what's you know this is not going to work if you're trying to fix it this way so after just literally having having them come down to the second floor to where i'm at and going through you know the the hardware and all that type stuff we're on the same page now but the past week or two two weeks it's just been back and forth back and forth um but we're in a good spot right now <laughs> i'm in a good place with the it department but it's just the thing of, like I said before, it's just being kind um, and not giving people a hard time because I realize that their job is very difficult and the way everything is set up with computers, it's like the once a corporation gets so big, they really have to go through a lot of hoops to upgrade their hardware. And that's what we're running into right now. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, we have a corporate suggestion box, right? Um, really explain why the hardware should be upgraded. <laughs> it really should. Um, because that's why, you know, not just me, but people in other departments on the other side of the second floor where we're having problems um and i guess i'll say in short our processors that we're using or the best that we can get is from 2017. the actual computer tower model that i'm using is from 2003 which is over 20 years ago uh, the monitors that I'm using, they look like they're from 1996, but I think that they're, they're coded for 2007 
which is what over 17 years ago um so everything's old and for them to upgrade you know i mean they're gonna look into their uh profit margins and things like that um they're gonna look into that but i'm still gonna suggest they upgrade their like their infrastructure because um the IT department is constantly upgrading the software, you know, to 2024. So if you try to run 2024 software on a processor from 2017 and the computer model that's from 2003, it's, it's not going to be great. You know, you're going to run into, into problems, um, which is why I upgraded all of my hardware, <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's an adventure, it's an adventure, and I will say this about shortcuts, if you're running into issues, like your computer is stalling, just upgrade the processor, you know, in short, that's my solution, upgrade a processor, because um, if you just upgrade the memory and your processor, you don't upgrade a processor, you can, it will bump up the performance a bit, but you're still going to run into problems because your memory, your RAM does not run the software. It's just a temporary space to hold the extra data that your processor can't handle. Um, and then when your memory runs out of space because your processor is throwing too much onto the RAM, your computer is going to freeze or stall or crash depending on how much data the processor is trying to throw onto the memory. So that's what I've been running into. Um, and the IT department, they gave me 16 gigabytes more of memory and I'm still running it. And then the problem just kind of got worse for some crazy reason. Uh, and I'm just using Microsoft Excel, but the spreadsheets I have are, gosh, like one of them, it has about 60,000 accounts on it. It's huge. Uh, the other project that I'm working on, it's over a thousand accounts. So yeah, my, my computer is having a fit. It is. Um, and then while I'm in the middle of that, I have reports that I need to do, or sometimes an agent contact us and I'll have to run a spreadsheet for them. I'm run. I'm, I'm doing a lot of multitasking, so <laughs> the computer cannot handle it. Uh, so I would say one, um, just don't, don't, don't take shortcuts with the hardware, especially if you're using it as much as, as I am, um, upgrade the computer processor has to be up to date the ram your mem your like your memory like okay take my setup for example i have uh eight gigabytes of memory on my desktop right and again i'm using apple but i don't run into any problems and i'm using adobe well not the full adobe suite but i'm using photoshop camera raw bridge um, sometimes I jump on the creative cloud, but rarely do I run into, rarely do I run into problems with it because I've got the M2, M2 processor on there, which is what 10 cores, it's either eight or 10 cores. I think I got the eight core one. Then I got the dedicated graphics card and I think that's eight or 10 cores. Then there's a 16 core, um, I think they call it a neuro engine. Anyway, 
the software nowadays uses a lot of AI, artificial intelligence within it. So that's what that's for, the neural engine, which I had never heard of before, but that's what Apple put into um, their newer CPU models. So I try, I try not to get too technical with it, but your CPU or your processor um, that runs your software. And let's see. If you have a dedicated graphics card, anything that's like Photoshop or Lightroom, that's what your graphics card is going to run independent of your processor. So if you have a dedicated graphics card, dedicated meaning it's it runs separately from your processor, then you can run more stuff on it without needing a bunch of memory, right? So only having eight gigabytes of memory doesn't really phase me at all because the dedicated graphics card runs a lot of Photoshop and then the processor runs whatever else I may be doing. Um, and I usually have Excel open. Sometimes I'll have Word. Um, of course, most of the time I'll be on the Internet. <laughs> so there's that. But yeah, it's it's like you can't take any shortcuts. And then I, the other thing I would probably say is the monitors um, on my day job. Like we don't even have full HD monitors. Um, and as I mentioned before, like last week, I just updated my second monitor, which is my television. Um, I updated it to 4k to match my color calibrated monitor, which is for my photography. So the color calibrated monitor is 27 inch. The television is 43 inches which I can also easily use that as my second monitor. So I have my photo editing stuff over here um, on the color calibrated screen. And then I have a whole bunch of other windows and stuff. Sometimes like if I'm not doing too much, I'll just use that to watch television or listen to the television. Um, but that's what that's for. And so I just have a lot of space. <laughs> to have all these windows. Um, if the resolution on your monitors is not great or is not at least full, like a 1080, uh, 1080p, then that means that you can't fit in as many window as many windows on that one monitor, um, and still see the information, you know, clearly. So that's why I would say, um, if you can upgrade to 4K, great, but at least full HD, um, 1080 is like the bare minimum. <laughs> um, and then as far as the monitor size, I would probably say bare minimum would be 27, but everybody's been telling me a 32 inches ideal. Um, so for me, I have a monitor that's a little bit too small and then the other one is a little bit too big. <laughs> So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, but it, for me, this is fine. Um, and then when I move, I don't know where I'm moving to, but when I do move, uh, I will upgrade a 27 inch color calibrated monitor to a 32 inch color calibrated monitor. But the one that I want cost a few thousand dollars. It does. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's expensive. It's expensive. Um, but yes. Now you can probably. Let's see. If you can't just put two, three thousand dollars on a monitor, color calibrated monitor. Then that's what you have business credit for. Uh, you can purchase it that way. And that's really where my thinking is going um, with the business credit. But it's taking me so long to get my personal credit to this point that 
I've pretty much already purchased everything. Well, not everything, but most of the stuff that I want. Um, this is my, this is a trackpad from, I don't even know if you can see it, Apple. Uh, I think they call it the magic trackpad. Love, 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 love that. Um, the mouse, I have the, the black one. This is Apple as well because the PC version of the mice or mouse was cramping my hand a lot. So I don't like, okay, this is kind of weird. Like I'm, I'm, I use both hands, right? Like for sports, I'm left-handed shooting a basketball, throwing a football. I'm left-handed writing, drawing, I'm right-handed. So I really can't, <laughs> Like, I couldn't really tell you, like, what's my strong hand. But anyway, um, I guess with boxing, I'd be like a southpaw then, right? Yeah, because they're left-handed. But anyway, um, I would use the mouse with my right hand with the PC mouse. But then my hand got like, oh, my goodness, achy. And then I started losing feeling in my pinky. So I'm like, oh, okay, I got to change the mouse. So when I change to Apple's mouse, it's very small, very flat. And I really couldn't get a grip on it with my right hand. So now I use this with my left and, I, and it works fine. I had to get used to it because it's kind of <laughs> switching. And then the trackpad, I use this with my right. And it took me like a week and a half to get used to it of because the way I started thinking, because normally I'm on a laptop and I'm using the trackpad on the laptop with my left hand. I'm using the mouse with my right hand. That's what I used to used to work. Um, now it's I'm not working on the laptop at all. And I have the trackpad on my right. The magic mouse on my left. And I had to like mentally switch everything <laughs> it took a while but now it's like my hand doesn't cramp anymore because the trackpad is flat of course so i just had to get my hand from like not being in this scrunched position um and then when i use the mouse with my left it's very flat so my fingers are always extended. I'm not having my hand balled up like this to hold it because I can't hold it like that anyway. Um, so there's that. The only other thing is the keyboard. I would like a full keyboard with the numbers over here. Um, Apple does have one, but it's like a hundred and a hundred and thirty dollars. So I had to pick like, what did I want first? Uh, so I was like, okay, I don't want my hand cramping anymore. <laughs> so, so I got the mouse first and this was a hundred dollars. Um, and then when I realized that I couldn't hold the mouse and move it the way I wanted to, I went back to Best Buy like two days later and I spent 150, 150 for this, which I thought it was overpriced um, and honestly overrated. I thought it was, especially at $150 for it and all it, it's just a big trackpad. Um, but actually it's the, the best piece of equipment I have here. Um, absolutely love it. Love the mouse, but I love the trackpad more. Now there are certain things that I'm still uncomfortable with doing with the trackpad. So the mouse is there, but for the most part, um, the trackpad is probably my favorite gadget <laughs> I have. Um, but yeah, so I had to leave off something, um, with my budget. So when I pay off um 
when I pay off my iPad, then I will get another keyboard. So there's that. Uh, and I know I've gone off into a tangent for sure off of my original point. But this is my iPad. I got the second generation pencil. Um, and basically point being is that I could not get business credit yet because my, my personal credit was in a bad spot. So yeah, it's, it's, I, I got it through Verizon. Um, and I just added it to my account. That's really what I did. Cause I already had my phone, uh, through Verizon, but Verizon turned out to be so pricey that, um, I'm like, okay, my bills have to come down. <laughs> <laughs> my bills have to come down because like I said my invest my investments didn't pan out like return on investments the way I thought so coming into this year I was like looking at my revolving accounts you know I had to pay out per month I'm like things have to go um for sure and so um the phone that I also got through Verizon uh, I went ahead and paid that off, which is, this is my, this is the 12. I got the iPhone 12. Um, and absolutely love it. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't used to, cause I had never had an iPhone before. And I will, I'll probably say like my sister talked me into it. And there are certain creative apps that are not on Android for some, for some weird reason. So, um, it was a little bit of shock for me cause it was what, 1200. Um, so yeah, I, I looked at my just my bills looked at everything like what am I spending and things have to come down uh, my overhead has to come down for sure and so um, I went ahead and paid the phone off and I switched that line I switched this line from Verizon to some another carrier um, so that saved me like golly over a hundred dollars per month. And then <laughs> I had my, uh, I got the 12.9 iPad pro, um, also from Verizon. I just had it on there as a second line. So when I turned, when I discontinued the phone with Verizon, the cost on this line jumped up about $50. And so I don't use it as a phone, right? But you can't uh, have payments on the device without having a line, right? So um, I kept the line for a few months that I wasn't using. And then finally, um, last month, I have Verizon suspended for 90 days. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, gosh, I'm say next month, the beginning of next month. Um, just, I'm just going to pay it off. <laughs> I'm going to pay off the device and, uh, and then I'm going to probably switch the line again, switch this line as well to someone else um or just use it as a wi-fi because i do have the cell cellular version so i can get 5g on here um which i love because if you are out in the middle of who knows where photographing 
and you can't find a Starbucks or wherever for Wi-Fi, you don't have to drive, you know, somewhere to get a hotspot. It's its own hotspot, which you can't do this with a laptop, right? So, um, so there, it does have a benefit, but at the price that they're charging me, um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, so I think overall, I'm going to save about $200 per month, just paying off the devices and switching the lines to like a cheaper carrier. Um, and like my phone has been fine. Um, I think the only thing that annoys me with the phone is our run out of data. Like the, like the 5g data, our run out like two or three days before the new cycle kicks in. So that, that kind of, uh, is annoying. But other than that, um, it's been fine. And then for the iPad, um, I noticed that the past year, I don't like where, wherever I am, there's Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, so I don't need it active, um, nearly as much as I thought I would. So yeah, there's that. And then where I moved to, like, I do want space, like more space, but I don't want to live out in the middle of nowhere right <laughs> at the same time so i definitely want to keep it um i'm definitely going to keep it for sure because i love like editing on here it's it's very good uh the only bummer is that the pencil i can't use it on the phone or apple's desktop like it doesn't work with anything else except for the ipad so i think that's kind of weird but um anyway so there's that uh so yeah i i'm gonna go ahead next month pay it off and i believe that's it i didn't put anything else on credit including the the uh television slash second monitor I picked up last week. I didn't put anything on credit. I'm like, no more debt. <laughs> no more. I'm not accumulating any more debt, whether it's business or personal, it's like no more. So that's my whole goal or anthem or whatever you want to call it for this year. It's like, get rid of all the debt. Anything that's revolving, anything I don't need, Get rid of it. Um, so what am I going to do with the extra income? That's not going into these revolving accounts that I have, that I have to pay for. I did get a, what's it called? Robin Hood account. Gosh, I believe it is Robin Hood and other investing apps. And that's basically what I'm diving into um i did also open up a fidelity account which was more confusing than i expected uh, but yes robin hood and fidelity um open up accounts and gosh there's got to be one more oh here we go public i also have an account for public so all of those are for investing um, in my investments so far, I just have to do better with them, you know, and then just keep researching those. And so that's where the extra income is going to go. Um, I'm going to look at dividends a lot more, uh, cause those seem to be the most, uh, like low risk accounts and go into that. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, like I said before, marketing. Um, once I get past paying this off, uh, getting into marketing and probably 
adding more context to the spreadsheet that I'm putting together, networking a lot more and getting more comfortable with networking for sure um, is, is the biggest thing. So, uh, and then the other thing that I've been working on the, um, the last couple of days is the lighting, which you can see that, um, what I do have is not great. So I have to look into that as well. Um, but between the lighting and the second monitor, I prioritize the second monitor, um, this time around. And so next month going into May is looking at, okay, what am I going to get for the lighting? I redid my, uh, setup here to where my monitors and everything, uh, sits. So everything looks better. Um, but I still need to upgrade just the, the desk. Um, but for how I want everything set up, it's going to be pricey. <laughs> It's going to be pricey. Uh, so, yeah, I and I just don't want to get like something that's just affordable. I want to get something really nice so that I don't have to upgrade it again. Like I want to do one upgrade with that. And that's that's it, <laughs> you know, so I want to pick something that I really like and that's going to be, you know, that's going to last, you know, and a setup is going to fit for years to come, you know? Um, and then as far as the space that I'm in, this space that I'm in now is smaller than where I was. Uh, and so I'm thinking, okay, this space here is nicer, but it's smaller. So I want to keep the space nice, but bigger, <laughs> uh, definitely go bigger and, um, where I'm not entirely sure. Um, if my contract at the company I'm working at right now, my day in the daytime for my day job, if they renew my contract next year, um, I can definitely work from home. Um, definitely going to try to work from home. Um, they've let me work from home for emergencies. Like if we have a hurricane, like during hurricane season, I had to work from home for a little bit. So it's not like I can't, it's just that they don't like contractors with company equipment. So, <laughs> so I can work from home, but I can't. Um, but yeah, so yeah. And, and I've already expressed that to my boss and just telling her that like now that I've upgraded my secondary monitor, um, my space here is a lot better than what I'm working with at my desk. So <laughs> at work, so there's that, but yeah, I, I think, um, I jumped a little bit like all over the place with this one, but it was just giving, an update on where I am, where I'm going, my progress. Um, and then specifically for the YouTube channel, I like, uh, capturing video of interiors. Um, I have a lot of shorts, short videos that I'm going to continue to share. And like I was in the shopping mall over the weekend and I just like looking at furniture, rugs, home decor, all that type stuff. Like I'm like, uh, I took another video of, uh, I have another short coming up of lamps that I like. So it's like what the space that I don't know where it's going to be location wise, all that, but I'm like, okay, what do I want the interior, the style, all of that to look like. And so the things that catch my attention or things I find funny, um, like the hello kitty stuff that I, uh, took video of a couple of days ago. 
that type of stuff. I'm sharing it and seeing what what you guys think about it. So um, so far, those are getting the best reaction so far of what I'm sharing on the on the channel. Um, and I definitely have a lot more in the archives that I'm going to share. So I've been busy working on the website and all of that. Um, the Shopify store is closed, as I mentioned before, the new store is coming along and I can probably jump into that to show you where that progress is. Hold on. I should be able to. Here we go. Okay. Now, the only issue that I think is a, something that's a problem is, and I have to ask the support team about this, for the website, sometimes I have to put the www in front of the URL, which is weird because that shouldn't be necessary. Um, but sometimes it seems like it is. You know, sometimes it seems like it is um necessary for me to do so let me go ahead and get yes i can create a qr code for the store which is already on instagram if you guys want to use that but let me go ahead and log out um so i finally got the slideshow working and I did this a few weeks ago and a few days ago, I finished the adding the water series. Now you see all the thumbnails up here, all of these, the series and the collections, they're all listed, right? But all of the pieces, the art pieces are not in, at least not yet. So I've got over a hundred photographs um, added already and I've got well over a hundred more <laughs> to add but uh, the water series is finished now so that's good um, so yeah the signatures have been added which is really what's taking me the longest to do um, I wanted to fine tune how my signature was on the work. And so I had to look up on YouTube some guides on how to tweak them without having to rewrite them. Um, so I did figure that out. And so now I'm able to make the lines a bit more nuanced. So how you go from a, it's thick here to thinner and then thick again. So I found a guide on, on YouTube um, which showed me how to, how to do that. Uh, so yeah, everything has signatures on it now, um, which is awesome. And then the, let's see, all the information is here. The keywords are here. Um, the metadata or camera info is here. So everything's here. So there said the all 17 pieces are there. I believe I also finished Dream State. Yes, I finished Dream State. So all of these are here. Um, 
Yeah, so that one. And then in the process of adding my signatures to these, I found um, a few more. Excuse me. I found a few more photographs that I might want to add to this series. One of them I just flat out forgot that I had. And I never add, I never added it to the Shopify store. But then uh, last week I looked at it and I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. So that's going to be in here somewhere. <laughs> it's going to land in here somewhere. I like to keep these in order especially for this particular series. So it's gonna fall somewhere in here. It could be number one, number four, seven, eight, and then 10 or 11. Um, some of them, I, I just realized I didn't like as much. They weren't as strong as far as composition. So those are not there, but there's, there's definitely one, but maybe two more. Um, that's going to be added to, to this series. Uh, the editing to it is finished. Like I finished it. I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't get around to giving it, you know, a number, uh, description, all that stuff added in it. But there's that. And what else? What else? What else? I know there was one other showcase is done. Clarity's done. Uh, oh, yes. And quarantine is finally finished. Now, as far as traffic on the new site, I believe quarantine is getting the most traffic. Um, but like I said, I want to focus on getting uh, about 30 to 40 more photographs on here because I have everything. Um, everything's in tears. Right. So I'm going from the best, you know, photographs at tier one and now I'm on tier five. And I'm starting to add stuff in tier five and tier six. Now, in total, I have. Thirteen tiers of work, and I know that might sound like it's a lot, but I like I've been capturing photographs since 2008. That's when I first, that's when I initially bought my first DSLR, um, it was in 2008. So those pieces that are really old like that, um, they're in like tier 12, tier 13, they're on the bottom. They're not really as expensive at all. Uh, and they're more for the casual art collectors. The ones that are like tiers one to three, one to six um, are more for people who are like really into collecting artwork. Uh, so they're going to be geared towards exhibitions and galleries, um, art publications, interior design magazines, that type of thing. So that's what these are for, like um pieces like like what's in quarantine here and yes i do have other ideas rolling around as far as new work for 2024 is concerned um but i just don't have time to work on it right now i want to get the the gallery in a really good place before i start adding new stuff uh here and for this weekend, I believe New York is going to be my next series that I work on finishing. There's some stuff in here. Maybe like half of the pieces are in here, but there's quite a few that's still missing. Yeah, so there's 10 pieces in here right now. I think the series has 17. So there's there's some missing. But um, I did add you know, the favorites, um, a lot of people pick out conversion or Oculus. Um, and then the one world trade center here. So these things are added. Um, the other thing that you might notice if you're looking at the work is you see this down in the corner, my signature, 
it's a little wobbly to me. So sometimes if I see stuff like that, I'll just re replace this file with a, a better signature. So I was doing that um, the end of last week as well. And I'm, I'm just so picky and I wish I wasn't sometimes because I've got a lot of photographs to add on in here. But um, once they're here, then you can just click on my photo and all of your options will be here, which there are quite a few options which I went over in a in a previous uh, podcast so all of those are still there 8 by 12 this one up to 24 by 36 so yeah and like I said before these types of prints are geared towards gallery owners, um, high-end art collectors. So those who have said, you know, Eric, we need something more in our price bracket. Um, I would definitely say there are some here. I would definitely say the Stasis series would be better. Now, these are older prints, but um, people still give me quite a few compliments on them. And so I felt like, okay, these won't be, you know, promoted, like marketed, you know, in the publications or exhibited in galleries, but for those looking for um, cheaper options, options that are more in your, in your budget, then these are, are definitely available and there's going to be plenty, like plenty of them. Um, well over 100 photographs are going to be in this category of where they're more budget friendly. Um, it's just, I do have to be more careful with what I select for, for these, uh, photographs because the older work, <sighs> I have to watch out for color aberrations, uh, camera noise, that type of thing. So when I get to those that are older files, it's going to take me a little bit just to make sure that when they're blown up to a larger size, that you don't get that color aberration or, or there's not a lot of noise in the shot. Um, I want to make sure that that's not a problem because if it is a problem, then I can't use the photo at all. So there are some that I like, um, but I just have to make sure that they print well at a larger size. But these are great. Now, as far as encompass, like this is a, also a favorite that people have pointed out. I can't, make this one any larger this is going to be very small um it's an eight by eight print and it's not available at any other size i would have to try to go back to the original file and see if i can recreate it but that's a bit of a pain um if i'm successful with it i will let you guys know for sure because quite a few of you have pointed it out. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just an 8x8 print for all the options here. Um, it's going to be 8x8 in size. So, yeah, I, I went into my personal financial story and work history type of thing. So it just in order to say, 
when you get into business or you have a small business and you need capital, if your personal credit is a mess, it's going to be really difficult for you to get business credit because they're, they're going to, especially when you start getting your first few cards for business, your business cards, you know, it's going to be a mess to get business credit if your personal credit is a mess. And so I've spent the past five years, maybe six years working on improving my uh, personal credit. And like I said, I've, I've come a long ways for sure, for sure. So now what I'll be able to do is, like I said, market a lot more. Um, and marketing is going to be tough. I think I'm going to have to target major interior design publications, like Architectural Digest, things like that. But it's very, very expensive. And so I'm going to gear up for a lot of networking first, see what feedback I get is in terms of what prints will work for marketing, and then go into and go into uh, purchasing like spaces and publications and things like that. Um, get back into submitting my work even more into exhibits um, here in the U.S. or international because I've done both before. Um, get back into doing that. And that will put a lot of a lot less pressure on my personal finances. So we're just separating it to a lot more um, in terms of my budget. Uh, is, is huge, like very, very important, but everywhere that my work has been, um, and then here I was represented twice before here. Um, so just to do that more, you know, to do that more. So once I, my contract ended with art up close, that's when I was in a tough spot tough spot and uh i realized that i'm gonna have to be you know smarter with my investments into my business um and then any debt that i had occurred you know accrued or, or just started piling up i wanted to get rid of all of that so like i said the end of last year coming into this year is just Getting all that out the way um, as much as possible, um, pretty much getting back to square one and and going from there, um, just making better decisions about what I apply for or which magazines I purchase ads in, that type of thing. Just be a lot smarter about it. Um, look at what's working, what's not working. And if it's not working, toss it, you know, get rid of it. So, uh, there's that, but yeah, this is what I've done so far as far as getting my work back, you know, getting my work out there. And it goes all the way back to 2004 because gosh, back in 04, I was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't graphic design. It was 3D modeling. I was into 3D modeling and I was still trying to get into illustration um, a lot more back then. But that's where I started in 3D modeling and I was trying to, you know, create illustrations, but I just wasn't great at the illustrations. The 3D modeling um, with the software I had was okay. Um, and I would love to get back into that part of it 
because uh, I, I love that part of it. Um, but yeah, that's where I started. And most of these are galleries. Um, and then in, what is it, 2006, was more towards photography. And I don't know, I took to photography, like I've said before. And it came, you know, naturally to me. Um, and so that's, that's what I've been, been doing ever since. I think what would also be good for this page, probably for the, maybe, maybe not for the CV, but the publications page is just to put, um, images of photos of the actual exhibition space or where my work was because I do have pictures. It's just that some of them are not as professional as I would like. I'll see what I can put together. But I do have some. And then in terms of writing, I mean, it's really why I switched websites from Shopify to Smug Mug is because I wanted the order process to be animated, uh, automated, I should say automated, um, so that I have more time on my screenplays, poetry collections, that type thing. Um, and writing is a completely different challenge because I, I need so much time away. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just you're completely immersed in story that there is nothing else. So I think I'm at a point now where once I get finished adding the the next 30 to 40 photographs to finish through tier five and six, um, I can get into starting to integrate the writing back into my workflow and see how, or if I can go back and forth between the fine art photography and the, and the writing and see how that goes. I'll probably have days specifically for writing and then days specifically for the photography because there's just a lot of stuff going around in my head. <laughs> um, and I tried to stick to one without the other and I just did not work. Um, if I try to stick to just photography only, I get bored. Same thing goes for writing. I'll get bored. So I kind of bounce between the both of them because it keeps me occupied creatively. Um, yeah, I just, I get to these days where it's like, okay, I want to do something else besides this thing, right? So that's why I have both and I'm trying to integrate both on the same website, put them on under the same umbrella. But yeah, that's where I am. That's all I've got for right now. Um, it's really dark in here now. So, so yeah, I've I've got improvements to make and all of that but everything just to say i'm i'm going in the right direction and i'm hoping to continue to keep going um the end of last year coming into this year i didn't know if i was going to continue the business i thought about closing everything and i don't it's just it's weird things right At this point, 
I don't call them coincidences, but <clears throat> I looked at the business debt, all that type stuff, and I was just like, okay, I'm going to close the studio, right? Um, like, I was definitely leaning towards that, and it's like just when I was about to say, okay, I'm going to close everything I got into the car one day and the radio was on and the person on the radio she was talking about not giving up on our dreams and I probably shared this before but that has stuck with me for a few months now well we're in April now so it's like yeah like two three months ago got into the car And she's, it's like she specifically was talking to me (laughs) and really said what I needed to hear. And so I took that as a, and it it was a Christian radio station, but I just took it as a message from God saying, yes, you're burned out. Yes, you're exhausted. Yes, you're fed up with certain things. Yes, you've accumulated this amount of debt, but if you look at the work, the work is still good. So don't scrap everything, but do go back to the drawing board and reevaluate how you're doing certain things and then figure out what you can do better, um, what expenses you can get rid of because it's costing too much, like manage the funds a lot better um, be more picky about which opportunities you go after that type of thing. And it took a couple, two, three weeks cause I was tired, just like mentally, emotionally tired. And, uh, I did take a break for like a month and a half. Um, and it was just like, without fail, my mind was like, Hey, I need something to do. <laughs> My mind's just like, I, I need something to do, right? Because it's like, go to work, come home. I can watch television, play video games or something like that. But it's like creatively, my mind needs something to do. So <laughs> I just sat here one day and I thought, I'm going to have to figure out how to do this because I don't think I can't like I cannot do this. I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. And so I just started looking at my spreadsheets, looking at my overhead, start crossing out things like this can go, this can go, this can go. Where are the funds going? How am I managing things like auditing my my budget? auditing myself and uh it's like okay there's a there's quite a few things i can i can do better and it's just it's just freeing up so many things uh as far as resources that i'm like okay i should have done this a lot sooner i should have done this last year right um but yeah i i feel like by june Everything continues to go in in this direction that I'll be in a very good place um, and then just use the rest of this year to just stack resources and everything on top, you know, stack as much as I possibly can. Um, and then when a rainy day comes along, it won't be. <laughs> It won't be like, oh, no, you know, Um, but yeah. And I mean, it's boring, to be honest, to just keep doing the Doing the same thing, same thing, same thing, get up in the morning, go to work, come home, work on work on the, the website and promos, social media, all types of stuff. It's not like the most glamorous thing, but I see where everything's going 
and how I can get there without burning myself out and being exhausted and that and that type of thing. Um, and I guess the final point that I'll leave off on, I haven't, is my diet. I like yearly, I continue to improve my diet this year. I don't eat meat as much, um, which I may have mentioned before. And I feel a lot better, like just physically, I feel a lot better. Um, so I, I think that's also a huge part of it. It's just having a better, um, diet is, is a huge part of it for sure. And I don't, I don't know. I just didn't intentionally like say, okay, I'm going to go into 2024 not eating meat. It's just, I started watching, uh, just discussions from medical nutritionists and looking at what they're doing and understanding that I'm going to be 46 years old in June. And I guess my desire to not really feel old, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I started looking at, you know, like learning from medical nutri nutritionists and looking at what they're doing. Um, yeah. And so I kind of fell into that and I noticed that, um, sometimes I would go a few days without eating meat. And I started to notice how much better I was feeling. And then all of a sudden I would say, okay, I'm going to have some beef. I'm going to have some chicken. I'm going to have some whatever. And man, the next day I would just feel so sluggish, you know? Um, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? Right. And so at first I didn't think anything of it. And then after a couple months, uh, I can definitely tell the difference between when I eat meat, when I don't eat meat. So, um, yeah, for the past month or so, I've barely eaten any meat. And when I did go to Publix, <laughs> this is like a week and a half ago, went to Publix, um, got my favorite popcorn chicken. And of course it tastes great. But a few hours later and in the next day, I was, I felt awful. I felt awful for like three or four days. I felt bad. And I'm like, okay, I'm not eating that anymore. And it's crazy because that's like my favorite. Um, I love the popcorn chicken from there, but it's like, no, it's like, no. So what do I usually eat now? Um, I love ramen and one of the medical nutritionists, you were saying like cruc cruciferous vegetables. So broccoli, cauliflower, um, I eat a lot of kale. I'm missing some stuff. Onions. I, I make like a bowl, like a large bowl. So it's kale, broccoli, cauliflower, red, specifically red onions, spinach. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. And then I top it with seeds. So I got a, I bought a mixture of chia seeds, flax seeds, and hemp seeds. So there's that. And yeah. And then I buy fruit sometimes strawberries, apples, um, whatever I, I pick at fruit, you know, citrus, I, the, the fruit changes, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's been what I've been eating. Um, and then I make sure that I have my iron, um, supplements or my multivitamins. I have to make sure the iron, I have iron and then I have a lot of protein. It can be simply, um, peanut butter 
and bread. And because my metabolism is so fast. Uh, and then I have my shakes, my protein shakes. So a lot of protein, a lot of vegetables. And I, I don't have an explanation for the ramen. I just like eating it. Um, and I don't use the, the packets that they put in the ramen because there's too much salt in those. So I just put the turmeric. Sometimes it's cayenne pepper and ginger. And that sounds weird, but seriously. Um, so when I go to the office at work and people have colds or getting colds and whatnot, I don't get, I don't catch their colds as much as I used to. I just, I just don't. Um, and then the other thing the med nutritionist was saying, like a different one, she was saying that, um, and this is going to sound random. She was saying that the end of your showers go with the cold water. And I know it sounds bad because, I mean, I don't like it, but that also helps because the cold water and it's like for like three seconds. It <laughs> your body feels like it goes in a shock, but what it does, it creates um, if I remember correctly, it creates T cells. Your as a part of your immune system helps you stay well. It creates T cells like crazy. So you can artificially create more T cells in your body if you just end your showers with, with cold water. I can't say that I'm used to it, but again, um, if I feel myself getting sick, especially when I feel myself getting sick, I will use the, the cold water or it'll be like semi warm leaning towards cold and then I'll go to just flat cold until I can't take it anymore. Um, and that happened like last week. Knock the cold right out. Like I was starting to get a cold, not it completely out. And I'm like, this is the craziest remedy I've ever heard of. But that works. So I guess um, I'm looking at so many different facets of my life and how I can get better overall and just every day take steps towards that. And then when I need to take a break, like I did this weekend, I take a break, um, I get more sleep. The playoffs and basketball have started, so I watched that. Um, and then, so I took the weekend off for a change. And so this morning when I was at work for a Monday, I was awake. I was alert. Um, I paid attention to all the little details that I have to pay attention to. Um, because Friday, this past Friday, I was a wreck. I was too tired. Um, just tired, tired, couldn't focus on all the little details. And when I'm at work and I can't focus on the details of these procedures, it's just a domino effect of causing problems. <laughs> oh goodness. So yeah, I have to, I have to be awake, um, when I'm at work and I'm really not a morning person. So, and that too, I noticed that too, when I changed my diet is that in the morning times, I'm more awake. And as long as I go to sleep when I'm supposed to, even though I'm a night owl, as long as I go to sleep when I'm supposed to, I'll be fine uh, getting up the next morning. So, so there's that. But yeah, um, like I said, I'm going to work on uh, New York. I'm going to work on New York next. And then once that's done, um, I'll move on to the next series or yeah, I'll move on to the next series. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to try to, after New York is done, the rest of them, like the, the Nemesis series, 
the Newport Beach series. Um, those that are a little bit older. I'm going to try to do all of those at once. I'm going to try to to wrap up the series as much as I can. Yeah, Jack's Beach, Volano. Dark Light is finished, but I do have Newport. So all the series are from Newport Beach on up that way. Once New York is done, I'm going to try to finish everything, like wrap everything up as as quickly as I can. Um, I do understand how I'm going to approach the signatures now in terms of editing and tweaking them. So now it shouldn't take me as long as as long to get through all of them. But once I get here and finish this one up, then I will probably take a break for two, three days. And then I'm going to go to collections, which is architecture down to portraits. So these are not really series. They're just a collection of the same subjects. Uh, and there are so many. <laughs> there are so many that um, it's going to be a while before I actually finish these. For sure. It's going to be a while. Because I have a list, a breakdown of what I want to add. But even after that's done, there's still more that can be added to these um, collections. So. Um, there's that. And then what am I going to do next? I noticed in the analytics this compression compression is in here by itself, but it has the most views by far of all of the pieces that are available now. So it's getting the most attention. And it's completely different from everything else really that's in my collection. Um, I had a few more that are similar to this, but they're in color. Um, I'm probably not going to add those back in just because stylistically they're not going to fit anymore. But this is from 2017 and just stylistically it still fits. It still feels current. So I'm like, okay, you can stay, but it's, it's getting the most, attention I did repurpose it or recreate it um because before in 2017 I don't I didn't have the hardware the computer I have now so I did recreate it I did to get through a little some tweaks in here on the bottom but for the most part it looks the same um but I said that because now when you purchase it, you can purchase it at a larger size because the computer I have now can handle, it can handle me working on larger files. So I believe on here it can go up to, yeah, 24 by 36. But if somebody just came along and requested a larger size it can print larger than that it can print up to 40 40 by 60 inches so there i was getting so much positive feedback from just people that i'm like i have to <laughs> i have to uh recreate it at a larger size so So there's that. All right. So I hope that, um, you know, I jumped all over the place, um, in this particular podcast, that's where I'm at. Um, as far as the status of the studio, the direction that I'm going, um, I mean, I look back at where I started 
compared to where I am and then I'm looking at where, you know, where I'm going, you know, in the future. And so I, I really do like um, where everything is going. And I will leave off with saying, um, as far as the interiors, like having mock-ups of your work like this with an interior, smartest is they're still good. They're still really good. Um, in January, I went ahead and and paid the annual price, which was $50 for the year because I was paying, um, the other option I was paying was like $25 every three months. So I decided in January just to pay the $50 for the year and, and to save, uh, a little bit extra that way. But yeah, they have, this is got to be my, your, your must have application because these rooms on here, you can see it a little bit. They're new. They're adding like 20 interiors every, <clears throat> excuse me, every two, three weeks, they're adding about 20 interiors. So this stuff in here now, yeah, they added more stuff. I haven't seen this stuff before. Oh, wow. These are nice. So obviously you pick the interior. I mean, there's probably hundreds of interiors in here at this point. And then you load in your artwork. So anything that I finish, if I want to put up a promo, all of that, um, I'll pick an interior. I'll pick a, an art piece and I'll just try to match it, match the artwork with an interior. So of course they, they all don't fit with certain ones, but you just get an idea of how your work is going to look, um, in a particular space. Excuse me. And then I think on the next podcast, I will go into the apps I, that I use, which are not a lot, but I do have some subscriptions that I, that I've kept that I definitely can't get rid of. And this is definitely one of them. So I'll go more in depth into it because I think the last time I talked about it, um, they've added some not only the interiors, more interiors, but some features in here that wasn't here before uh, when I talked about it before. So there's that. Okay, so thank you everyone for for tuning in and I will I will see you on the next one. Everyone take care.